So API controllers are very similar to the doors on a house. The doors on a house are there to facilitate people going in and out. And they're usually the first thing that you notice. They're usually the first thing that you walk up to when you're trying to enter a house. If you're going to go into an API, you're going to go through the controller, i.e. the API endpoint. And API endpoints, the way that you actually go through them is through URLs. Now, we have all different types of endpoints. You could have endpoints to get many things. You could get endpoints to get uh, just one thing. But one of the most important concepts that a lot of people kind of gloss over is that you have this thing called a list and you have this thing called a detail. And lists and details are all in programming and in software in general. Think about it. On your Facebook page that you very rarely go to, it usually starts out in the form of a list. It starts out in the form of a feed. And if you want to go to that person's profile, you go to a detail page. And API endpoints help us facilitate this. We have an API endpoint that gets us list and we have an API endpoint that gets us details. And that's what we're going to make as our first controllers right now. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is go into our API and we are going to create a new folder. We're going to call it controllers. After we get done doing that, we are going to create what's called a stock controller. And we are going to create these on a model by model basis. Notice that the stock is the model and we're going to separate them. So we'll actually have a comment controller as well too. And that's done by design in order to separate concerns. So the first thing that we want to do, it may be tempting to come up here and go ahead and put the attributes, but I always put the uh, controller base first. If you add the controller base just like this, it's way easier to actually bring in these uh, attributes later. If you bring in the attributes first, it always messes up and it always mixes up the actual namespaces. You could also put this, a lot of people like to put the controller, but I think it looks better to type it out because this part's always capitalized, capitalized and it doesn't look as neat, I think. So I always just go ahead and spell out the stock. Next thing is we're going to go API controller. And because you brought in the controller base first, like a smart person, just kidding, it's going to automatically bring in all of this for you. After this, what you want to do is you want to create a con uh, constructor. So press ETOR and we're going to press tab. It'll bring in a constructor for you. This is where things are going to get really fun because now we're actually going to bring in our database. And the way that we bring in our database is we bring in our DB context. Now you could go ahead and type that whole entire thing out, but I think it looks better just as context. And we also need to bring it in up here to make it read only. If you don't do this, it's going to allow it to be mutable and you don't want something like this to be mutable. Even in this case, I don't think there's really much damage that could be done if it wasn't mutable. You could make this public, but I think it makes things look a little bit better and it does provide just a little bit more security against people modifying things that aren't supposed to be modified, which will probably help you in the long run if your app actually gets bigger. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create our HTTP Git. Now remember, Git is the same thing as read. They call it a Git, but it's actually just a read. When you're reading something, all that you're doing is you're literally just getting it out of memory or in our case, a database and reading it. And you may be wondering, well, how are we going to get it out of a database? We've already created our application DB context and we can quickly just go into here as we get done making our method. And we're just going to go ahead and make code that's going to grab it from the database using what we just created. Now, if this doesn't look like something that you just create, if you don't think you created this, you actually did. So if we go into here, you click stocks, which if you didn't see that, just control and click, you can see it takes us to the application DB context. So you did indeed create this and remember that the application DB context is there just to get stuff out of the database. So we're doing our job, we're getting things out of the database, but you may be asking yourself, well, why do we have to have this to list? Well, this is called deferred execution. When you just do this, it's going to return a list like object, but it's going to make SQL on the fly. So 
technically this, if you just do this right here, this has not been executed. In order for you to be able to create the SQL to go out to the database and get whatever you need, you have to have the two list because of something called deferred execution. So if you don't understand why we use the two list, read up on deferred execution because it's really interesting and it will explain why exactly we did it if you didn't understand the way that I told you just then. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an HTTP get that takes in a variable just like this so that we can get just one record at a time. We're returning a list right now, but we want our details well too. Remember we want, we just created our list, but we also want our detail page. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it. We're going to make an API endpoint that will only return one actual item. We're going to have our I action result right here. So we'll have I action result and an I action result just means this. An I action result is simply just a return method. It's simply just called an action result. And all an action result is, is a fancy little wrapper so that whenever you return something from the API, you don't have to go through all types of in-depth code just to tell the person that you're returning a 500 request or you're returning a 200 in this case. I action result is just a nice little wrapper that's going to handle all of that for you and make it so that you don't have to type out all types of crazy code just to tell somebody that you're returning or that your actual API endpoint worked. Okay, so now we have get by ID. So when we're returning an individual thing, when we're returning an individual stock, when we're returning one individual just record from the database, we actually have to tell them which one that we want. It's not like a list where we're returning everything. If you're going to return a detail, you have to be specific. And that's why we added this ID right here. And the what, what's going to happen is that this ID is going to be transferred down here into this parameter and .NET is going to take care of all of this for you. So .NET is going to use what's called model binding to extract this string out turn it into an int, and then it's going to pass it right down into our actual code, which I think is absolutely amazing. So we'll have context, we'll have stocks that we're going to find. Now find is very similar to any type of searching algorithm. A find is literally just a form of search that's going to find by the ID. Now I've read all on Stack Overflow, you could use first or default, but Supposedly find is the best if you're just using ID because it's going to search directly by the primary key. Okay, so next thing, do a little null check. We're going to check and see if our stock is null. So next thing that we're going to do is if we don't actually return something, if we're finding one thing, what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to check if it's null. And if it's null, we're going to return not found which again is a form of I action result, which is a fancy little wrapper that's going to provide us with the not found re request. So we don't have to type out like the status code and all types of crazy stuff just to tell somebody that it's not found. And then lastly, if we found it, we are going to return the stock and we will be able to see it within our API. Okay, so we've got our control ready, but there's a couple of things that we need to do before we test this. The first thing is that we need to add our controllers to the program.cs. So if you go into here, we're gonna type in services.addcontrollers and we are good to go on that. Then what we need to do is right before the app.run, so right here, we need to type in add and then we need to say map controllers, just like this. If we don't do this, Swagger will not work and you will get this weird error called an HTTPS redirect error. Um, it's very frustrating, so make sure to go ahead and add those. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and fire up SQL Server Management Studio. We need to go within our database right here and we need to create some dummy data within our stocks. So go to our stocks. Um, I've already populated it with a couple of records, but I'll show you how to go ahead and add records to it. So if you go into here, let's say you want to add, I don't know, we'll say VTI, you're an index fund guy. We'll say Vanguard total index. And we'll say the purchase price is $200. I think it's way more than that now. Probably, maybe, I don't know. I haven't checked. 
in forever, but uh, dividend, and we'll say index fund. And then we'll say a market cap of a couple trillion dollars. So next one, we'll say Palantir. So uh, maybe you're a big Palantir fan. Go Palantir, uh, purchase price. I think it's like 20 bucks right now. Last dividend, not paying a dividend. Industry, technology, say so tech technology and the market cap just put in a fake market cap like this okay so last thing um this is the last thing i promise we're gonna go dot net watch run so go ahead just restart your dot net uh restart your server really quickly then we'll go inside of swagger and the great thing about swagger is that we have all different types of cool little ways to test our endpoints and it does everything for you pretty much so go ahead execute this You'll probably get sort of a long loading because it's actually going to have to hit the database. Um, but nonetheless, you should see all of your stocks right here. So let's go ahead, find one. Let's say we'll test Tesla out. Go ahead, copy this. Um, go ahead, paste that into there. Make sure that it gets okay. And then it only returns Tesla. And let's also test a fake number really quickly. And we get a not found. Our controllers are working. We can finally move on to the next part of our app. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.